Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve summary ranges, leak code number 228. So we're given a sorted unique integer array called nums, and we're defining a range as square brackets a to b. And this is the set of all integers from a to b inclusive. So it's a to b, including a and b as well. So we need to return the smallest sorted list of ranges that cover all the numbers in the array exactly. Now, this doesn't really mean anything unless you look at the example here. So basically, it wants you to return this. If you have 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, then you have 0 to 2. So we have 0 to 2. But then there's a gap there. So we're missing 3. So then it's actually going to be 4 to 5 because we're also missing 6. And then we have just 7. So basically, it's the intervals of A to B of the stuff that we have. And if you have just one number in a row, there's nothing before this and nothing after it, then it's just going to be that number by itself. So basically, we're going to have an index I, which is set to the first index. And we're also going to be building up a new array, which I will just call our answer. That's going to start as an empty array. Now we're going to get a starting value, which is going to be the number that we're looking at right now, which is going to be zero. Okay, so we're looking at this number here. Now you want to ask the question, is the next number, aka what's at i plus one, this number here, is that what you're expecting, which is nums at i plus one? Well, no, it's not. This is not the value of one. And so we basically have a break here. So we're immediately ready to plug something into our output array. What is it going to be? Well, it's obviously going to start at zero. And actually our starting value is that same number that our array is still looking at. So basically meaning that we didn't move at all. So we're actually just going to keep it as just zero. You can think about this as the string is zero, but I'm just gonna write it like that. So then we'd look at the next number here and we'd say our starting point is then two. Okay. Okay, is the next number over the one we'd expect? Yes, it actually is. So in that case, we're really just going to move over our index and look for a break. We do not update our starting point because our current starting point was still that two. We keep moving this over and then here we see that there's actually a breakage on the next number. So our starting point was what we started at. That's why we marked it. And we're going up until our current number. So the starting point is not what we're currently looking at, meaning we actually covered some ground here. We're ready to plug something into to our output and so you'd want to get our starting point and then up until our current value okay we're going to move this index over we'd see that we actually have a starting point of six and immediately we have a breaking point and so you are ready to just plug six into the output because our starting point is matching our current value over here we see eight there is no breaking point so we are going to start at eight and we are going to keep this going here this is the other situation that you can consider a break because we don't have anything at the end of the array here. You need to watch out for that out of bounds error. So there's nothing over here to the right, meaning we must be done here. Therefore, same rule. We started at eight. We're going up until nine. And so we are going to go from eight up until nine. So you could ultimately return your answer once you got to the end of the array. And that's really all there is to it. Okay, so we'll get an empty array, which we're going to call answer. And we'll set our index i equal to zero. Now, while i is less than the length of the nums, we'll get our our starting point is equal to the number we're currently looking at, nums at i. Then while we have i is less than the length of nums minus one, so this makes sure that we are not going to look out of bounds because we're trying to look over at i plus one. So now we can look at i plus one. If we have this as the case and that our current number plus one is equal to our next number over, well, that means we don't have a break. So we want to just increment i. So he's going to keep going while this stuff is true. After we get out of this while loop here, we have hit a breaking point. Now we just need to know, do we want an interval range or do we want just a single number? You want the single number if your starting value is still equal to whatever nums at i is currently. So if start is not equal to nums at i, that means that you did actually cover some ground here. We'd want to answer dot append the interval, which is the string version of start plus the string of the arrow. So we can just draw it with a dash and then that bracket like that. And then it is going to end in the string of the current nums at i, which we know is going to be a different number than our starting point because we've already checked that. So that's the case if we have an interval. Otherwise, we don't have an interval because start is just equal to nums at i, and so it's just one value. We would answer dot append with the string of nums at i. And after this loop is done here, you would want to i plus equals one and ultimately return your answer. Now, let me answer one question you likely have, which is, hey, isn't this an n squared time? 
time complexity, you have a while loop. And then within that, you have another while loop. Well, no, because this while loop that is going to end when I gets to the end of the array. Okay, this one would too, but I is not getting reset. Okay, it would be n squared if you basically had I going over the array, and then you had some j value that was kind of going up and then getting reset and then going up and getting reset. That's not the case. I is steadily moving towards the end of the array. And so as long as that is the case, this is going to be a time complexity of big O of n, where n is the number of elements of nums and the space complexity here, you could either call this O of n to store the space, or you could call this O of one kind of ignoring the space that the output has. Sometimes people would ignore that because it is the answer. But for us, we're just going to say this is O of n because most people would probably say that. Okay, if you were to submit this, that is going to work. And I hope this is helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was and have a great day. Bye bye.